Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the number one reason why many confessing Christian men who are married are miserable. You do not express the kingdom of God. Peace and joy is not your portion. And privately, you struggle with that closed heaven. You do not sense the presence of God. You're just miserable in your walk with God. Why? Because many friends, and I mean many, and how do I know it's so? Because we get, or I would say personally, I receive many emails from all over the world of women who are being mentally uh, and, and for some physically abused by the husbands who are churchgoers sitting in the front row of the church. Some of them are deacons. Some of them are pastors. Some of them are bishops and confessing apostles and prophets, so on and so forth. Friends, if you have an uncle, a grandfather, a brother, a son, and you are concerned about them, send them this video. I am not teaching a man today. I am exhorting, I'm encouraging my brothers in Christ that First Peter chapter 3 and 7, because people like to make all this fuss and noise about women teaching men. One, we don't take prisoners on this channel. Motivating you to win is for the body of Christ. And if that happens to be a man and you want to give your ear and hear these exhortations, these are exhortations to encourage and to motivate us to win. And as far as I'm concerned, the last I checked, Jesus commissioned his disciples to make disciples. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Nonetheless, let us hear the facts of the matter. Friends, 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7 clearly tells us this. He said, husbands, this is Peter. And you got to remember that Peter is the same one that received revelation from God who Jesus was. Even though they were walking with Christ, it was not until God, the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, revealed to Peter who Jesus really was. When Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? It was Peter that spoke up and had the revelation. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Listen and hear me, friends, because this is the same Peter telling the husbands in the same way, he says, treat your wives with consideration as a delicate vessel and with honor as fellow heirs of gracious of the gracious gift of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. Friends, when your prayers are hindered, I'm talking to my brothers in Christ, it is a direct uh, 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 communication from God. He's not pleased. He's not pleased. When you're mishandling us, and, and listen, we got to consider the facts. Confessing followers of Christ are divorcing left and right. When a man is harsh, when you go weeks and will not speak to your wife, when she keeps telling you that she needs you emotionally, or or in most cases, that's what the problem is, is there's a emotional disconnect with us, and it does cause harm in that relationship. But the instruction was given to our brothers. Colossians chapter 3 and 19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. When you are harsh with your wife, brother, you can't remember the last time you went and surprised her with a, a, a bouquet of flowers. And let's say she don't like flowers. When the last time you got off a little early before she got home, cooked dinner, got the house in order, set up something really sweet for her. And even if you don't have the finance, it takes nothing, friends, to get an old notebook and a pen and start writing a little love note to your girly girl.
And then there are men who are constantly bullying your wives to have sex with you when you have made no deposit. There's been no affirmation. There's been no consideration. There has been no, 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 no nothing. And you're trying to withdraw without the deposit. See, without the, the uh, wife being happy, As your spouse, you're going to be miserable in your own house because God has clearly spoke through Peter. And it's true, friends, that we are the weaker vessel when it comes to that marriage covenant. If you're bashing your wife, if you're browbeating her, if you're bullying her for sex and you know you cannot chronicle the last time you just did something sweet for her, Brothers, come on, come on, come on. Who you kidding? See, God will let you know because you don't have that, that joy. You, you, you feel that dark cloud over your life because you're mishandling your treasure. The most valuable person in the planet next to a man is his wife. God gives us to you as helpers, but if you don't cultivate the garden, if you don't weed and feed, oh brother, you're going to have a problem, not just with her, but with God. Come on and go do that Bible study, 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7, and then Paul wrote those that were married in Ephesus, and this is what Paul had to say. He said, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So beloved, if your husband and your brother, your son, your uncle, and you you know there's all these problems in these marriages, you got to check your attitude towards your wife because you're the one that asked her to marry you. See, didn't nobody put no mm-hmm, gun up to your head? She didn't force you to, to ask her to marry you. Come on, dad didn't do the gunshot move on you. <laughs> Come on, you asked that woman to be your wife and now you treating her like you the hawk. I'm getting angry and you want to choke her out. You want to throw her across the room. Come on, friend. No, God has given us to you all as gifts. And if you are harsh, if you are playing those emotional games, shutting her down, shutting her out, friends, you are making yourself an enemy of God. That's right. He said, "Hmm, I'm not listening to your prayers. I'm not listening to you because she needs you. Come on now. And Peter said, love us like Christ loved the church. That's right. Ephesians chapter 5, 28. He goes on to say in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. Oh, friends, it's right there in the scriptures. He who loves his wife loves himself. And this is a word of encouragement to the women who are in some very difficult marriages and you're struggling with your husband. Remember this, you cannot draw water from a rock. If that man does not love himself and you keep going into these dark places because he's mistreating you, you must understand it's because he doesn't love himself and you are just receiving the byproduct. You are getting the overflow of his own self hatred. And then you got to remember, sisters, that the scriptures teach if a woman, if your husband is not rooted in Christ and he is mistreating you, you got to be strong enough. You got to have the wherewithal to pull up your big girl pants. If that man is not cheating on you, he ain't running around on you. He ain't out in them streets. But yeah, he might be kind of abusive emotionally and some other financial matters or whatever is the problem. But you got the anointing. So we can't put it all on our brothers because you got to stand too, sister. You can't be giving the brother all types of chatter when you know in your heart that he does not know God. Come on, you can't draw the water from the rock, sisters. 
You got to have compassion and patience. Why? Because he's your husband. This ain't your kids you talk about. Kids is something different. You're talking about someone you took an oath for better or for worse. But my brothers, I challenge you. 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7, Colossians 3 and 19, Ephesians 5, 25, and Ephesians 5, 28. If you feel and sense that closed heaven over your life, check how you've been treating your wife, who you vowed to take care of for the rest of your life. God bless you, my friend. Till next time, be encouraged. Humble yourself. Have a good sit down this weekend with your wife. Make time and tell her, you know what? I've been tripping but I love you and I want us to make it. Go to her, talk to her, brother. Be the poet, be the priest, and prophesy renewal to your marriage. You can do it. Get rid of those feelings. Feelings will always lie and play games with us. Stick to your vow. Your vow was to the Father. God bless you, my friend.